Hello and welcome back to Eldritch Magician Plays Dream Daddy. Um, we are going to continue with our game. Um, last time we uh, dated Robert. So that was interesting. Um, so we're going to see what happens now. Welcome. You've got that. All right. So. Let's see, we've dated Robert. We've dated Brian. I don't know if we we've gone. No, we haven't dated Brian. Uh, but what's this? Steven from Dadmazon. Out with my delivery? Okay, yes, I'll be right down. Wait, sorry, I need to put pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see what, what we got from Dadmazon. Oh, I got a package. Wonder what. I bet it's that package of socks I ordered. God, we are so boring. Open out the box and start pulling the packing peanuts out. Man, these socks reek. Okay, that's definitely not socks. It's the head. Butterflies? Butterflies. Boy, I don't even, almost don't even want to know what Amanda was planning on doing with these. Hey Amanda, your box of dead butterflies is here. What's up? Are you sacrificing them? <laughs> I, I can't get over my Joseph. I just... Wow. That was a thing I did. What? You ordered butterflies? Yeah. You can order dead butterflies on mine? Wait, so these aren't yours? Hmm. Uh, no, but I'm definitely ordering some right now. Okay, love you. Who the crap sent me dead butterflies? Oh. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Well, let's go give it to Damien. Let's proceed. What do, what do I owe the pleasure? <laughs> How'd you know I was about to knock? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, anyways. I think this got delivered to my house by mistake. <laughs> Hand him the box and his face lights up. Oh. What a wonderful surprise. I was just about to send a strongly worded letter to the courier service about this. Many thanks. I not to pry, but what are you gonna do with those butterflies? Well, I mean, he did have the butterfly displays upstairs that we commented on earlier. Would you like to see? Sure. Alarm bells ring in my head. This is how you die, Joseph Seed. <laughs> oh, I'm a huge dork. Sure. And leads me to a study where we've seen these butterflies before. We set up some sort of workstation. Above his desk is a wall of pin butterflies, moths, and beetles. Oh, wow, that's really something, Damien. Huh. Quite proud of my little collection. You do all of this yourself? Uh -huh. Of course. I find it rather relaxing. How do you... At least tell me he has a death's head moth. I mean, you'd have to, right? <laughs> it's simple. Here, let me show you. Hmm. These aren't ready quite yet. They'll need to be rehydrated overnight so they're easier to work with. I have some over here that are ready to pin. That's actually um, true. I have um, spoken to people who uh, do stuff with um, preserving butterflies and stuff like that. Steven takes a seat at his desk while I hover behind him. He picks up a little triangular paper package and snips off the edges. 
pulls out an all black butterfly and shows it to me. Cool. Hmm. Rather excited about this one. It's turquoise swallowtail. It gently opens wings, spreading the butterfly out on the table. The backs of the wings are a gorgeous iridescent green color. Ugh. Oh, the pigment on this one is so nice too. Anyways, pinning a butterfly is actually very simple. It just requires a delicate touch. First, I'll put a pin through the thorax and slide the pin through the middle of the butterfly and places the butterfly on a piece of styrofoam. He carefully arranges the antennae with forceps and begins placing paper and more pins on and around it. He does this so effortlessly that it's almost hypnotic. Oh. I have a frame here that I think this one will look quite pretty in, but I'll need to let it sit for a couple days until it's ready. And then what? Ah. I remove, remove all the pins and put it on, the dis on display with the others. Take a closer look at Damien's collection. One with bright blue wings keeps drawing my eye. This one's so pretty. Damien takes it off the wall. Hmm. Ah, yes, that's a blue morpho. One of my favorites, too. He hands a small frame to me. Oh. Here, I think this would look lovely in your home. Aww. Oh, I couldn't take this. Oh. I insist. Believe me, I have more than enough. Thank you. Aw, maybe we should go for Damien. He's sweet. Oh. If you ever had an interest in pinning some insects yourself, you know where to find me. <laughs> I think I'll leave that up to you. I feel like I'd probably break them in half with my butterfingers. Hmm. Nonsense. You have beautiful, steady hands. You would make a fine taxidermist. Uh, among the weirder compliments I've gotten, but sure. Am I blushing? Damon walks me to the door and gives me a warm smile as I leave. Hmm. Do take care of yourself, Joseph. Thanks for allowing me to share my odd little hobby with you. Um, for anybody wondering what that crash was, that was cats. Welcome. You've got dads. Ah, uh, well, Craig is messaging me, so let's see what he wants. I've got the runs. Thanks for sharing. Yep, just a second. Huh. That I felt like running. Why don't you say that, you weirdo? Want to come with me to the gym? Not particularly. <laughs> Why do I feel less excited about that than getting you home remedies for diarrhea? Come on, man, it'll be fun. You know what? Sure. When are you doing this? There's 30 more minutes left in this Meat Hell marathon. I'm outside right now. I'm warming up. Okay. <laughs> At least let me see if Betty gets away from the wolves in time to get her the prostata wrapped cheesecake out of the oven. This sounds like a TV show I would actually watch. I guess we're going running. Oh god. Bro. Dude. Nice. Uh Run that dad. I don't know what to do here. I've got, like, no... I don't know if this is a... Dude. Trying!
Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I have no directions on this. So I don't know what I'm supposed to be pushing or... Yeah, nothing is, uh... Dude, Dude I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Like, nothing I'm pushing is... I think this minigame is broken. Okay, so apparently it didn't like the uh, recording software, so um, somehow, despite the rocky start, we did okay. Welcome. You've got dads. All right, so um, go with Hugo tonight. See if I got any hearts with. I got one heart with Robert. I guess that's dates. Um, we went out with Matt. Did we go out with Craig yet? No, we haven't. I know we've gone out with Damien. Um, yeah, let's go with Hugh. Well, no, I want to go out with Joseph. Let's go out with Joseph. Let's be uh. Let's go with a hilarious, um... Surely this has got to be hilarious, Joseph and Joseph. Family's a little weird. Like those freaking shining twins. Um, but Joseph seems cool. I should take him up on his offer to hang out. Wait, how do I hang out with a priest? I don't go to church. Should I be Jesus-y? I imagine Joseph's family staring at me as I fumble through some sort of prayer attempt. Maybe not too Jesus-y. A light spattering of Jesus. <laughs> ah, this is already worth it. Will he want me to pray? Is he going to pray at me? <laughs> do I have to pray at him? Talking to Joseph, huh? Huh. Gah! Amanda, how many times have I told you not to sneak up on me like that? <laughs> I selectively ignore it every time you do, Pops. Amanda looks over at my shoulder at the screen. Joseph can't read your mind, you know. You want to talk, just message him. But I've never been friends with a priest before. What do I talk about? My favorite Bible passages? Ice cream socials? Khakis? The voice. You minister with a tattoo, not a priest. The difference? Aww. You're overthinking it, Dad. Listen, just put it like this. Ugh. Hello, neighbor. Thanks again for the invite to the barbecue. I'd love to hang out soon if you're not too busy. Isn't that a little too business casual? Hmm. Fine, fine. Give me the keyboard. I got this. Ah. And it focuses on the keys. Hi, Joseph. It was great meeting you and your family. I'm still nowhere around here, so if you'd like to... I'd love to hang out and get to know you. See ya. The smiley is a nice touch. Almost immediately, I receive a response. What do you say? Hi, Joseph. If you're not doing anything a bit, the kids and I are baking treats for the church bake sale today, and we'd love to have you over. It'll be a blast, so let me know. Joseph. Eh, that wasn't so bad. Uses a lot of exclamation points. Hmm. I'm more concerned about him signing his name with a tilde. I'm willing to let it slide this time. Hmm. I respond back. Sounds like fun. Joseph. Eh, <laughs> 
Uh, I feel like I'm mocking him. Well, I guess I'm doing this. Hmm. Save a brownie for me? Promise you won't sneak up on me anymore. Hmm. And it stares at me unblinking. I don't make promises I can't keep. Real to a fault, Pops. Aww. And Dad, please don't be weird about the religion thing. Me? Weird? Never. This is so freaking hilarious. <laughs> Take the short walk over to Joseph's place. Don't be weird, Joseph. Both Josephs. Don't be weird. What if they hang out, a, hang out a bunch of crosses or collect those little porcelain babies? What if they're all praying? Do they pray before dinner? During dinner? Over the porcelain babies? Jeez. The door begins to creak open. A shadowy figure obscured on the other side. Who's there? Uh, Joseph? Other Joseph. Not Dad Joseph. The door opens the rest of the way. It's Joseph Seltis. What's his name? Chris? Jen? Hey. Hey, uh... Not Krish. It was Christian, wasn't it? It's Chris. God damn it. Chris, right. Hi again. It's I'm Joseph. I know what your name is. Ouch. Oh yeah, we met at the barbecue. How's the uh Please don't say it. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, this is delightful. Chris blinked slowly. Maybe he didn't hear that. You're weird. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Is your dad? Before I finish, Chris walks into an adjacent room, leaving me in front of the open doorway. Oh. This was a great first impression. For a moment, I wonder if I should just go in, further subjecting Joseph's family to my winning attitude of an artful charisma. Mercifully, Joseph... Uh, translation error or something. Peeks his head around the corner. Oh. Joseph, you made it. Hello, Joseph. Joseph approaches with his arms wide. <laughs> I'm so glad you could come by. Are you ready to bake? I am not. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> That's the kind of semi-confidence I like to see in a baking assistant. Come on in. Oh. This just leads me into a bright, spacious room full of nautical knickknacks. This isn't what I imagined at all. It's actually pretty charming. Well, I mean, the fishing thing does kind of jive with the whole Christian thing. Because, I mean, they've got the whole... <laughs> Fishers of men and the yeah. ichthys and all that kind of stuff. I believe you met Chris, who left you outside. Yeah, but I did screw up his name. A little bit. Only a little bit. Oh. Chris? Hmm. Mm. Are you going to apologize? Oh, right. Sorry. I try to make eye contact with Chris, but he keeps looking away. He must be really shy. It's alright. Next time, just be a little more inviting to our guests, okay? Sure. I mean, dude's trying to be good dad. Chris seems to relish the chance to escape the conversation and quickly vanishes into his room. Joseph turns to me apologetically. Is that the difficult age, you know, the one between, like, 11 and 25. <laughs> Don't take it personally. Chris likes to keep to himself. I mean, we didn't start off on the best foot in the world. Plus, being the eldest in a big family can't be easy. Hmm. We try to cut him a little slack when we can. Ah, and here are the twins. Christian, Christy, and say hello to Joseph. Ugh. I'm gonna play with us, Danny. Hello, Father. Hello, Joseph. You guys are so creepy. Hmm. 
kids. Come on, dial it back on the creepy twin stick. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. Creepy twin stick? Oh, I want to egg them on. That's not going to make Joseph happy, but... I'm really curious. Can you just say, come and play with us, Danny? Yes! Yes! Oh. oh no. The twins stare up in unblinking unison. Come play with us, Danny. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> Joseph cover covers his mouth and looks away, but he's clearly holding him back a big laugh. <laughs> this is it. This is my Dad World series. <laughs> Okay, now say, please help us, Mothra. <laughs> uh, oh, that's wonderful. Please help us, Mothra. Mm -hmm. No, I can't take it. Jeff is trying his best not to break in front of his kids. The twins seem to keep catching on and look eager to bust their dad. But can we keep it up? Hmm... Twins, 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 twins. I mean, I go straight to freaking The Shining, which those kids weren't actually twins, but um, you know, close enough for government work. Uh, and the actresses weren't twins. The kids were supposed to go be twins. Um, I'm gonna go obscure. Now say he who walks behind the rose. Oh, nice. Uh oh. He who he damn it walks. He who <laughs> behind. Oh. I tried. Some rose. <laughs> the room is silent. Besides, Joseph absolutely losing his mind. That last flub really sealed it. <laughs> Children of the corn, really? They're, they're creepy little kids. Is that not mainstream? Am I off my I am off my game something fierce today. Great job, guys. We're scary. Yes, yes you are. I was very scared. Joseph can't take it anymore. Despite his quiet protestations, he's laughing pretty hard into his hand and the kids giggle with him. The twins, obviously pleased with the new arsenal of spooky weapons, leave the room to terrorize the rest of the community. My work here is done. <laughs> I'm going to be hearing those lines for weeks. Yes, you are. Next time we hang out, I'll try to teach them some li lines from the thing. Oh. All right, so it looks like we've got a bit of a troublemaker on our hands. You think you can out-trouble a career pro? Are you challenging me? I don't know about... Oh, I'm suddenly interrupted by a loud crash from the kitchen. What now? Oh. That doesn't sound good. Christy? No one responds. Joseph furrows his brow and motions for me to stay where I am. <clears throat> okay. Wait here a minute. Joseph rushes into the kitchen. I remember this with Amanda. Half of fatherhood is trying to keep your kids from finding creative ways to kill themselves, and you got four. Talk about worry. Yeah, I understand that very young children just try to take, like, death dives out of your, ha your hands when you're holding them, and fling themselves off of couches and etc. So, yeah. Once they get mobile, I imagine it's even worse. I take a seat on a surprisingly pristine couch and twiddle my thumbs. Hmm. I'm interested in what he's got in his books. I see kind of a, a Jesus figurine at the top of that boat shelf there, but... Pretty sturdy wooden bookshelf. It looks handmade. Did Joseph build this? Well, I suppose carpentry is kind of a thing. Travel magazines, hyenas of the Serengeti, the underwater mysteries of the Antarctic, and on and on. It seems like Joseph really loves a good adventure, unless this is a very thing, who knows? Next to them are a couple different Bibles. Looks like he's covering all the Bible bases. King James, New American Standard, Bible for Teens. He is a cool youth minister, after all. 
A higher shelf, there are a bunch of old romance novels. Judging by the wine stains, these must be Mary's. The newest one looks like Hot Body Johnson, Sex Detective. One of my friends bought a uh, romance slash erotica novel um, at uh, our local half price books. It's called Sex in the Hood, and that 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 book is gold. No matter what page you turn to, if you read it out loud, it's just some something just amazing. So I highly recommend it. I don't know who the uh, author is, but um, Sex in the Hood, if you can find it, big recommend. Eighth installment in, wait, this is a series? It's often a series. Let's go to the coffee table. A couple of cool knickknacks on the coffee table in front of me. Hey, a cross. Hey, another cross. This one looks a little different. And a third cross. Unified design aesthetic. Smart choices. Would Damien, like, detonate if he came in here? There's also a brass thing here. Looks like something a sailor would use to navigate with. I think they're called sextants. Hey, <laughs> sex. God, we are five. The floor. Have this many kids, and things are bound to end up on the floor, no matter how hard you try to keep it clean. I spot a terrifying cloth doll that appears to have had both arms pulled off several times, then stitched back together a hot lot. The tag says C plus C. Of course. I set that down and spot a houseplant. Hey, little guy. Keep being you, tiny houseplant. Spot one last thing on the floor next to the houseplant. It's a silver necklace. Wow, this looks expensive for something casually tossed on the floor. If there's a story here, it's none of my business. It's been a while. I guess I should go into the kitchen and see what's up. Walk into the kitchen to find Joseph holding Christy in one arm. She seems a lot calmer than she was a minute ago. Raise an eyebrow at Joseph. Mm. Twins are a lot more manageable when they're separated. Where's Christian? Is, is, is he in the mixer? mixer? Yeah. He ran off. Christy dips a spoon into the brownie batter and gives it a taste. Dad, it's too sweet. Mm. You're too sweet. No, I'm not. Mm. No, she's not. You're so sweet, I might have to water you down with spiders. Uh, no, not spiders. This begins tickling Christy with his free hand. Between the laughing and the squirming, I don't know what I got a hold of her, but that girl is locked in place. The man is a professional child wrangler. Christy fixes me with her best puppy dog eyes. Oh, yeah. Save me from the spiders. Renegade option. <laughs> well, obviously, we've got to choose the renegade option, because, duh. Sorry, Christy, but I've been working with the spiders the whole time. <laughs> no. They bought my allegiance with a promise of flies. I'll hail the spiders. <laughs> this grins and continues his tickle torture. No one escapes the wrath of the spiders. After a few seconds, he relents and puts Christy down. She immediately retreats behind his leg, where she watches me quietly. Oh. Christy, don't you want to bake with Joseph? She shakes her head. It must be my, must be um, my alliance with the house tickle spider. Oh. You sure? You'll get first dibs on the biggest piece of brownie. Christy hesitates and shakes her head no again. Sparkle pony. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ouch. Joseph cover covered up his disappointment quick, but that looked like it hurt. Mm. You don't want to go with Dad now, or you want to go play with Sparkle Pony? Yes. Yeah. Okay, go. Where Joseph can even finish his sentence, Christy is out the door and down the hall. Ahead. Joseph sighs deeply as he stares into the chocolate batter. He tastes it again, face twisting. Uh, that is still way too sweet. So what made that crash? I... Egg beaters on a linoleum floor. Oh. My new techno single. Still haven't thought of a B-side. 
Now we're both looking into the batter. It's got a sickly sheen of sugar and chocolate candies throughout. I have a feeling Christy had something to do with it. Hmm? We need a fresh start. Don't we all, Joseph? Don't we all? Oh, uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm not really a baker, but... Wow. Don't even sweat it. The bag came with instructions that have mysteriously vanished along with my daughter. So we'll probably be fine. Oh, we're gonna... We're gonna, um... Improvise baking? That's... A terrible idea. Probably. See, you can improvise with cooking. Cooking is art. Baking is science. Excellent. Baking is chemistry. And if you get one thing a little wrong, you can make a lot of unintended consequences. Yeah, probably. He certainly looks competent. Following your lead, dude. All right, Joseph, you've baked a cake from a box before once. How hard could this be? You have no idea. Oh. Now grab a spoon and get ready to rock. Mario Batali, save me. Joseph and I set to work, cracking the eggs and mixing the things and pouring the things according to how we assume the back of the box would tell us to. Oof. Things go up according to plan, and soon enough we have a solid batch of brownies. That's that's good. Nice. Whew. Wait. Joseph has a little dot of batter on his nose. Oh. Wow, Joseph. Way to use those dad skills. I bet you've baked a few box mixes in your time. His nose. Joseph. <laughs> All we have to do is bring these to the bake sale, and voila. Duty done. Ahem. Oh. Now, help me find Christy. Keep your eye out for a pony that sparkles. Joseph, hold still. Mm. What? Thumb in position, and... Uh. Got it. Joseph's go eyes go wide as I gently ch wipe the chop chocolate off his nose. Is he blushing? Not like I licked it off. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, thanks. No problem. In less than a second, I have licked the batter off my finger. It's really good batter. Oh. We, uh... We should find Christy. Hmm. Yes, yes, we should. Do that, Joseph. Joseph quickly composes himself. <laughs> All right. She can't be far. You take the delta position, and I'll watch your six. Do you even know what that means? Yeah. Alpha Tango Sparkle Roger Roger. This starts making his way down the hall and calls back to me. Take the brownies and the rest of the stuff I baked earlier today while I get Christy. We'll meet you out by the car. Oh. He's leaving uh, the other half of that pair wherever he went. Okay. Arrive at the church parking lot to find fold-out tables and pop-up tents already set up. Looks like the bake sale is already in full swing. Oh. Wow, this place is packed. Is this... packed? There are a few people milling around. It must be a value pack. Oh. If you can count the city's population in your fingers and toes, this counts as packed. Point. She rockets out of the car and into the lot. Is she running on jet fuel? I want to sell brownies. Oh. Okay, okay, let's get set up. I want to see mom. Ah. She's down by the other row of tables helping out with another group. You want to go over there and tell her I said hi? Mom. Christy zips off immediately. Joseph seems unconcerned. Does she always run that fast? <laughs> yeah, and I can only catch her half the time. These knees aren't what they used to be. I remember when Amanda was her age, I couldn't get her to sit still for five seconds. Hmm. Yep, great age to deal with. Hey. While Christy's j gone, Joseph and I managed to arrange all our baked goods on the table and settle in. So, are we allowed to eat any of our own goods? Hmm. Look, if I don't see nothing, I don't say nothing. The man upstairs has strong feelings about snitches. <laughs> Does he actually? Hey. 
Mm. There's just shrugs. He eats a brownie. Looks like some of the other stalls are selling drinks, little handmade crafts, and other sweets. Oh, someone brought a soft serve ice cream machine. I gesture to it. How are we supposed to compete with that? Hmm. Well, obviously. You buy a brownie, take it over, and put the soft serve ice cream on top of it. Duh. Please, this isn't my first time to the rodeo. The bake sale rodeo. Mm. There's actually no rodeo here. It's just a bake sale. Mm. I think you and I put together can make one pretty convincing argument for these brownies, don't you? Um, let's not eat all of our profits. Yes, we have... Yes, we have confidence. Oh, yeah. We high five. You bake it, they will come. Yeah. Not long before we have our first customers. Hey, it's Matt. Oh. Hey, dude. Hey, Matt. Carmen Sita. Hiya. Carmen Sita is so cute. Matt, Carmen Sita. Great to see you guys out here. Happy to support a good cause. Plus, you know, with the owner and proprietor of the Coffee Spoon, an establishment that specializes in baked goods, I have to scope out the competition. Just flame colors to me. Mm. This guy knows his stuff. Stay on your toes. Hmm. So, what recipe did you use for these brownies? Don't say use the box recipe. Don't say use the box recipe. We improvised. Because we did. I just let the baking spirit move through me, you know? A little bit of flour here, a pinch of salt here. It's sort of like interpretive dance, but with cooking. You can't do that with baking. Oh my god. <laughs> interpretive cooking, yes. You can never make the same thing twice. Every batch is special. Mm. There will never be another batch of brownies with the exact flavor sensation as these right here have. That's... Not how things are supposed to go, but sure. <laughs> it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, Matt. Hey. All right, all right. We'll take two. Actually, we'll take three. Bring them up and high-five Joseph as our happy customers walk away. Mm -hmm. See? Not so hard. Yeah, I'm hot off the good feelings from last sale. Who's next? We sold our brownies to a bunch of people I don't recognize, but who clearly know Joseph. Eventually, another familiar face pops up. Joseph! Ugh, it's our nemesis! It's Brian. Hey. Close enough. Oh. We interest you too in any of our fine sweets and treats. <laughs> you sure can. I bet I could eat ten brownies. Must resist urge to be competitive. Yeah, let's not eat all the profits. So we'll put you down for ten? Right. Ah, better make it just two. One for me and one for Daisy. <laughs> Coming right up. You excited for youth group movie night, Daisy? Yeah, what's the movie? <sighs> it's a surprise. Just flings over to me. Oh, yeah. It's a Fast and the Furious. That's yeah, not a bad movie. I, I enjoy that movie. Really? Oh. If you think about it, there's some hip, heavy religious undertones. I don't know about heavy, but a little bit. Just fans of Baggy Daisy. Hmm. I made sure to give you guys the edges. Hmm. Clearly the superior part of the brownie topography. Thanks, Joseph. Our two customers walk off with their purchases. Joseph and I survey our stock. Oh, yeah. These are selling pretty hot. At this rate, we'll have enough money to pay for a new paint job on the church pews in no time. Wait, what happened to the pews? Mm. Ernest spray painted his rapper alias onto them. Young Steinbeck. I... Okay, one, Ernest should be paying for the repaint. And two, I, you know, I can kind of respect the, the uh, rapper alias there. That's, that's not a bad reference. 
I would have gone for Young Man in the Sea, but I can respect that. Yeah, see? Speaking in ministerial terms, in its earnest is hard to reach. Makes you a little shithead, doesn't it? <laughs> in father terms, earnest is kind of a turd. See? A little shithead. Being a cool youth minister seems like a lot of work. Yeah. It is, but it's worth it. Sorry about the pausing tonight. Sometimes I have to have been pausing tonight to uh, extricate cats from situations that they've put their own damn selves into. Mm. Although, sometimes I wish I could just slap the shit out of Ernest. Mm. Never mind. What? Mm. Kind of silly, but. Mm. You ever wish you could just drop everything and go lounge around on a beach somewhere in the tropics, drink fruity blended beverages, fall asleep on a hammock, you know, basically live out of Jimmy Buffett song? Obviously. I mean, isn't that, like, everybody? Joseph? I think about this every single day of my life. My dream is to live in Margaritaville. Mm. One day, my friend, one day we'll be on island time. Make a couple more sales for church patrons. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Off in the distance, I spot my old buggy, Craig. Oh. Craig! Eh. He's going to be a hard sell. Craig's a fitness man. Then he comes to these bake sales to test himself to see if he has a resolve to refuse processed sugar. Hey, you got to have a cheat day occasionally. Huh? Are you sure you're ready for this? I was born already. We go way back. I got this. Oh. Craig jogs, uh, jogs up to his table with Briar and Hazel in tow. We're each finishing an ice cream cone, so it's unlikely we're going to sell them on brownies too. That baby is kind of cute. Probably won't be able to sell it to the baby. She's impossible to read. It all comes down to Craig. Oh. Hey, bros. Hi, Uncle Joseph. Hi, Amanda's dad. He's also named Joseph. <laughs> Would you be interested in one of our delicious homemade brownies? Hmm. hmm I don't know. Hmm. While true, I don't think that's going to get him. That's blackmail. Let's go with blackmail. Hey, Craig. We were freshmen. Remember how our next-door neighbors pranked us by switching out our laundry detergent with dish soap and how the washing machine exploded with subs, suds? Then we decided to go get them back by baking brownies for them, but sprinkling high-intensity hot sauce into the mix, and then we watched them cry after eating it. Nice. <laughs> I would feel bad, but we had to clean up the laundry room ourselves. Anyway, these brownies are like that, but without the hot sauce. Maybe you should get one more, for old time's sake. I... Craig thinks for a second. Hmm. Well, the girls just want a game. Hmm. You know what? We'll take one for each of us. Uh. Even River? I'll eat hers. <laughs> You've got yourself a deal. Ooh, I got a lot of J Joseph points for that. They winds down and we're pretty much out of items to sell. Everyone starts packing up. Christy eventually comes back and immediately falls asleep on J in Joseph's falling chair. Boxed mix, huh? Ugh. Mary saunters up to us. She looks like she'd rather be anywhere else than here. See, this is a thing. Joseph is married, so I don't know if we can hook up with him, but at the same time, she's awful. And she's got to be sleeping with Robert, right? Got to be. Oh. Oh, hi, honey. Yep, they're selling like hotcakes, which is actually they're just brownies. Cute. <laughs> and boring and safe. My god, you're such a bitch. Um, hey, Mary. Mary's eyes dart over to me. Oh. What's a rookie doing here? The what? Mm. I was just hoping to introduce Joseph to the rest of the community. Ah. Uh huh. Get a load of this freak show? Who, me? What? Uh? 
Weird folk is all holier than thou types. Ah. Don't you think, Joseph? Yeah. Mary. Give it a rest, buddy. Ugh. Let the kid answer the question. Uh, I'm not a kid? Um. Okay, so that would make her happy, and I don't give a shit about that. That make him happy. I don't think I'm gonna get any of that, but you know, or I could avoid the question like a complete wuss. So they uh, they all seem like they're pretty excited to help out the church. That's pretty cool, I guess. Ah. Uh... Mm. Yeah. Mary, can we talk about this later? Come on. Oh, am I embarrassing you in front of your new friend? Joseph doesn't respond, trying his hardest to keep his cool. Uh. Can we please talk about this later? Hmm. Sure thing, honey bear. Hey. Mary turns her attention to me. Oh, God, no. Hand over the cash. Uh... Jesus, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm in charge of the funds here. Who put her in charge of anything? Hand over the cash we've made. It feels like a hefty wad if I say so myself. Ah. Thanks. Ah. Now give me your wallet. What? <laughs> that was legit what for me. I didn't hey. actually realize it was... Uh, Part of the game. Get me your wallet. You think this church is going to fix itself? Well, if you believe real hard in Jesus. Oh. Mary. Hey. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. I'll work on the whole pretending to be happy thing. God, what the hell? Mary leans in and whispers to me. Hmm. He's really good at it. Mary walks off without saying goodbye. Yeesh. Dude, are you serious? about this I mean not to dig into your marriage but geez um I'm really sorry about that I'm really sorry your wife is a heinous bitch um yeah uh, well let's be nice I, I could ask what's her deal but um I think I think I kind of got it. He's just mad at the world or something. She really likes pushing her buttons, huh? Ah. Joseph shrugs. Oh. No marriage is perfect, but that one seems a little bit, um, Ooh. yeah. You ready to head out? Sure. Joseph and I load the folding tables back into my car. Uh, Christy nods off the moment jo Joseph straps her into the car seat. Oh. I drop Joseph off in front of his house. The small yawn sneaks out of me. Mm. Looks like I tuckered you out, huh? I'm a sleepy dad. I think I might finally be crashing from all the sugar. Mm. Ah, I won't keep you up then. <laughs> Thanks for helping out today. Happy to do it. Also, happy to eat brownies. Hmm. So I'm just listening to this music here and it's it's pretty good and there's a little tiny bit of Silent Hill esque to it. I'm I'm digging it. Well, next time, I promise we'll do something a bit more exciting and a little bit less free labor. I'm very sorry about the whole thing with Mary. You shouldn't have had to see that. Dude, like... It's fine, really. I don't... I don't want six kids. <sighs> I know, but... First hangout domestic problems aren't a good look. You barely know me. I've met your wife several times, in fact. She's hanging out with Robert. Do you know that? Hey. Let me make it up to you next time. It won't be Margaritaville, but we'll do something fun. Promise. 
I smile. I'd like that. Hi. Oh, and one last thing. This tosses a cling rack brownie through the window. It hits me in the face, but I'm able to catch it. <laughs> it's the last one. You earned it. Joseph, please don't leave me alone with this brownie. Nope. Too late. I'm already walking away. But, <laughs> bye. This walks up to his home. He waves at me before carrying Christy inside. Well, looks like it's just you and me, Brownie. Let's save it for later. We go home and we make coffee. That brownie's going to be even better. Or Amanda's going to eat it. I pack out the brownie. It might come in handy down the road. Ah. Step inside to Amanda doing homework on the couch. Ah. Hey, father unit. Hi, child that I'm required by law to care for. How's homework? <laughs> it's really fun and educational. Really? Yeah. How long have you known me for? Right. Hmm. How was a bake sale? Good. I think I really could have made a good life for myself as a brownie salesman. Ah. Huh. Glad to hear it. Ah. So. So what? Hmm? Were there any extra brownies? Or did you maybe sneak one? Or I think for a moment realize I still have the brownie that Joseph gave me. This would probably do better in someone else's stomach than mine. Heads up. Hey. Wait. I hurl the brownie towards Amanda. Hits the wall behind her and falls to the ground. I'm bad at this. <laughs> nice throw. Huh. She scoops it up and smiles at me. <laughs> Thanks, Pops. Hey, if you're not going to bed anytime soon, would you be game for some real shark hunters of Orange County? Okay. But the last hunter got eaten by a shark. Mm. He did. If only someone could have predicted that. I sit down next to her and cozy up with a blanket. Awesome. Date complete. <laughs> I've never had that much fun in my life. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we did great with Joseph. Welcome. You've got dads. All right, so we will see what this is next time, but I think uh, that uh, one date per session kind of works. Um, so we will um, go ahead and post this. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, and feel free to, like, I know the... Like three people who watch this or um, know me personally, so feel free to tell me who you think I should try to date. Um, I'm going to try to do a first date with everybody, possibly a second date with everybody. Um, the third date is where we make our actual decision of who we're going to pursue. So, me, I'm either... I'm kind of leaning towards um, Damien because he's sweet and a goth. And I, I like that. Or Robert, because Robert is probably going to stab us, and I have um, unhealthy uh, unhealthy attractions towards that kind of thing. So, um, what do we do? Uh, or do we break up a marriage with uh, make a Joseph and Joseph team? Or maybe we're going to be hot for teacher next time. Let's see. Uh, I think all we got left is Hugo, Brian, Matt, and Craig as far as first dates go. So um, let me know who you think I should, uh, should get more hardcore with. Hope you guys have enjoyed this, and um, we'll catch you later.